it's great to have Stacy Brown Jr. with us. He took us to a good hot spot last night, and he set up a great town hall meeting for us today. And the BFRO has put the word out all over the place, so I'm hoping we get a ton of witnesses. And we're holding the meeting at the Circle S Rodeo Grounds in Miaka. to see we had a lot of witnesses lined up out there a lot of redneck looking dudes so you know they always got good reports this place is as redneck as anywhere and those dudes get out there these guys are outdoorsmen hunters fishermen so you're gonna have a lot of potential bigfoot witnesses hello this part of florida have you seen or encountered a bigfoot could you please raise your hand My name is Jeff. This happened three days ago. Stopped at the north entrance to Mayaka River State Park. I felt that something was watching me. I stopped, I looked to my right, and I made eye contact with a very tall, hairy hominid. And I said, hey! And it turned around and ambled off into the woods. I was walking and I just felt like somebody was staring at me. So I turned around and I was like, who is that? I pulled the scope and looked right at it and zoomed in on it. Big brown eyes, the nose was like flattened out. And all I can remember is just watching it breathe. We just turned around and head back to the house, turned around and looked and it was completely gone. I was hitchhiking in April of 2012 and I was gonna go down and camp out underneath the underpass. And slept for a little while and I woke up to a strange sound that was coming right down the embankment. Just like the ah, ah. And it was just nuts. We knew Miaka was a hot spot, and the number of witnesses at the town hall just confirmed that. I couldn't believe my eyes, because I didn't believe in Bigfoot. I compare it to a, a bear, a cow, and a person yelling all at once is what it sounded like. The hair was really long, just flowing in the wind all the way down the body. I spotted these two big red eyes, and I was like, holy crap. We're getting some pretty interesting reports here from all across Southwest Florida, but there's a few we want to focus on, including some that are very recent. We're gonna look into these reports and hopefully we can nail down an area that's in the general Miyaka area that we can focus on for our final night. Well, it seems to me that enough stuff's happening inside the park that I'm a little hesitant to leave. I wanna go camping for a few days with Stacy and have him show me around the park. Absolutely. All right. Stacy has gotten keys to a huge chunk of the Mayakin River State Park that no one is allowed to go in in a vehicle. Stacy and I are gonna go back in canoe. The fastest way to get in there is go down the Mayakin River. Man, this place keeps going and going. Yeah, we're heading into a park that's largely untouched by man. There's probably gators and stuff in the grass, isn't there? Oh yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised a bit if we happen to come across a good number of them. After disembarking from the canoe, Stacy and I start looking around for animal sign. Run into something. You sure tell there's a lot of hogs around here. Sure enough, there's a ton of it. There's hog sign, there's deer sign, and rarest of all, except for possibly a skunk ape itself, bear sign. This is fairly fresh today, I would assume. There are very, very few bears in Mayaka River State Park, so finding scat like this is really informative for us. Uh, there's actually more Bigfoot reports out of this park than there is bear, so. So this is a rock solid sign though. If a bear is surviving in here unseen, certainly a couple of Bigfoots could do so as well. Yes, sir. Uh, 
We're going to meet with Jeff Cook. He was the military guy at that town hall meeting who said only a few days ago he saw a Sasquatch probably only 20 meters away from him. It's really important for us to check out Jeff Cook's sighting because it's so recent and where it happened was so close to some of these other sightings. So do you mind running us through everything that happened? Sure. It was uh, when this past Wednesday, the 28th of January, right before dusk. I was walking down the road, just getting a little exercise, and I got a creepy feeling. So I stopped, and I looked to the left, and I immediately made eye contact with a big, hairy hominid. I knew the only thing it could be was a Bigfoot. Finally, I said, hey. And it ambled off in, into the palmettas and disappeared. It was standing right next to that oak tree. Its mouth was slightly open. How did it move? Very smooth. Uh, no head bob. It just glided right through. Well, I want to go over there, look to see if there's any type of a game trail, but more importantly, stand where you saw the figure. Yeah, go for it. See if you can get in there. So this tree right here, Jeff? Yes, ma'am. Like this? Yes, right there. So when it walked away, which direction did it go, Jeff? It stepped back, and it walked to its left. Then it moved to its left. Right through there. So at this point standing here, where would you estimate the top of the head to have been? Go up, go up, a little higher. Right about there. Seven, about seven and a half feet. How wide was its shoulders? A little more, right there. Dang near three feet. Hang on, let me, I'm, I'm trying to get the picture straight in my mind. You're walking down here. Yes, sir. Get a feeling. Mm -hmm. You're seeing it, you're making eye contact with it. How long did that last? Well, in my mind, as my bowels started to loosen, it seemed like an hour, but it was probably maybe two seconds. And when I said, hey, that's when movement was initiated. You said, hey. I said, hey. Like, what, what, what did you? What I wasn't you thinking? thinking. I wasn't thinking at all. And then when did you lose sight of it? If you keep walking, I'll tell you. That's where I lost sight, right in front of you. That's rather odd behavior because this is where it's thick and there's an open trail that goes that way. Jeff said that the figure turned over its left shoulder and walked straight back. Now, when I follow that path, that's definitely the path of most resistance. It's over palmettos, through vines, and uneven ground. And most of all, it's still open to a clear line of sight to Jeff. So if I'm an intelligent animal, like Bigfoot is supposed to be, you could step behind the tree and walk straight back. You'd be out of line of sight immediately. You're saying off in this direction over that way, there is a way to leave? Yeah, far easier to go this direction. This way is through thicker palms. Can I say something about that? Sure. Game trails are used for casual movement by animals that are not feeling threatened. When they feel threatened, they're going to seek cover as quickly as possible. And I've seen this with hogs and deer. They bust off the game trail right into the thick stuff uh, so they can get away. Well, one thing to take into account with your theory, those are prey animals and not predators. And Bigfoot would be a predator. So my 15 years of doing field work in Alaska with brown bears, which I would assume have a somewhat similar relationship with humans. I mean, they're an apex predator, but they don't want to be close to people, as they actually do use game trails. Renee claims to be a bear expert, but I am a Sasquatch expert. And I can tell you that bears and Sasquatches have completely different interactions with humans. While bears will try to avoid people, they'll still be completely out in the open in daylight. Sasquatches are highly intelligent, and they'll use their intelligence to throw people off their trail. And they'll sometimes use misdirection to prevent people from following them.